Hello guys, welcome back to the channel for a new Databricks video. Today's video is about partitioning and bucketing in PySpark. They are both very important techniques when we want to enhance performance and optimize data operations in PySpark. Partitioning is when we split a dataset into multiple smaller parts called partitions that can be processed simultaneously across the worker nodes. Bucketing is, is something similar to partitioning but in the context of table storage. So when we save the data, when we store the data, we split the data into buckets based on a hash function that we apply on a column or multiple columns. Bucketing is suitable when we have joints and aggregations on large datasets. Also, it's very suitable when we have columns with high cardinality, unlike partitioning, which is more suitable for columns of low cardinality. For me, it's always easier to understand the concept when we use a, simple, a very simple example. And this is what I have prepared for you today, to understand the basics of partitioning and bucketing and understand the differences between those two, at least the basic things. So let's jump straight into the code. Okay guys, here on our Databricks workspace, I have the notebook with the demo. The first thing we have to do is actually create a simple data frame. Now we have three columns, ID, name, and date key. So let's run this code here to see our data frame. As you can see, we have only 10 records. We're going to keep things simple. Then we have the names. And here, the last column is the date key. Now, date key is a very convenient column to partition your data. It's a it's a very common scenario to partition your data based on the date key. Now, if we order this column, you will see we have four records with 0 0.1 and then four records with 0 0.2 and two records with 0 0.3. So we have three distinct date keys here. And it's pretty convenient to partition the data based on the date key, as you can see, because we, uh, it's pretty easy then to run queries for this exact partition based on the date key. Partitioning. It splits the data into separate directories for each unique value in the partitioned column. Ideal for columns with low cardinality. Low cardinality means that the column contains a limited number of distinct or unique values. Partitioning can improve performance significantly for queries that filter based on the partition column. Of course, there is a drawback and that's that we create too many small files. That's the small file problem. So let, let's save this data frame into a delta table, but first partition the table by date key. So let's run this command df.write partition by date key format delta save as table. Table name partitioned underscore data underscore apple. So let's see in this directory now what files we, we get. And as you can see, aside from the delta log that contains the transaction logs, we have three directories, three folders. And the folder names are the date key. So we have one folder that contains the data for this date. Then another folder for 0 0.2 that contains the equivalent data and one folder for 0 0.3. So we have three distinct date keys. So that means three directories that also means three partitions, right? Now you can also double check using the Spark uh, syntax, spark.read, format delta, load your data and then convert it to RDD and then get the number of partitions, display the number of partitions and it should be three as we checked here. Three partitions, three directories here. Okay, so now by default there are two types of joins in PySpark, the broadcast join for the small data sets and the sort merge join. So for example here where we join two data frames, uh, the sort merge join is by default enabled. This type of join is going to be performed. Now the sort merge join, what it does is actually first shuffle the data, shuffles the data, then orders the data and then merges the data. But data shuffling and ordering are expensive operations and we can avoid that with bucketing. But first let's disable 
uh, the broadcast join because by default it's enabled so use this spark.sql auto broadcast join threshold minus one to disable auto broadcast uh, join so a broadcast join is an optimization technique uh, used in scenarios where one of the data sets in the join operation is small enough to fit the memory of each worker node spark will automatically broadcast the smaller data frame to all worker nodes which can be quite expensive in, terf of, in terms of performance so let's disable this feature and also disable adaptive query execution which is a performance optimization feature enabled by default we want to disable this feature as well now let's perform this join here we, uh, we have one data frame that points to the table that we just saved and the second data frame exactly to the same data frame because there is no business logic here we are going to demonstrate how the join will work in this case so let's run this the first one as you can see is display and here if we click on view and under DAG visualization you will see the steps so expand DAG visualization as you can see here exchange that means we shuffle the data and then we sort the data and then we merge the data so all those operations are expensive right and here when you use the dot explain to explain the physical plan as you can see it says exchange has partitioning that means we scan and then we shuffle the data and then we order the data and then we merge the data as you can see here can we avoid this? Yes, we can. And we can using bucketing because when we uh, save the data, when we perform bucketing and we save the, store the, the data as a table, then when we read this table, we have already pre-shuffled the data and pre-ordered the data. So the data shuffling and the data ordering has already been done. And then we just scan the data. It's pretty simple. So let's move to bucketing. Bucketing splits the data into more manageable parts or buckets based on the hash of a given column. Unlike partitioning, bucketing does not create a directory for each bucket. Just remember that we don't create a directory, but stores multiple buckets in its part file inside a single directory. It co organizes data in, into a fixed number of files, buckets based on the, on the hash of a column. This, uh, this helps avoid data shuffling. Useful for improving joint performance and avoiding data skewness. Suitable for frequent joint tables on columns that are bucketed. So let's enable bucketing and then use the bucket by and then here we use three, uh, three buckets. We are going to split the data into three buckets and then here we provide the column for the bucketing that we are going to have and then format per key one thing to notice here when we apply bucketing is that you cannot use delta format so if you use delta format here it's going to give you an error it's well uh, let's uh, run this as you can see operation not allowed bucketing is not supported for delta table so you have to use par key format so let's run this command here and save the data frame uh, underscore back, bucketed underscore data underscore apple so let's describe this table here and if you scroll down a little bit you can see the number of buckets are three and the bucket columns is the id here right and this is the location now let's uh, check the files underneath this directory as you can see there are no folders anymore they are just simple par key files and the data are split into buckets now when you're dealing with a bucket table data is divided into a fixed number of buckets based on the hash function applied on a column here we applied we provided three number uh, three is the number of buckets so three buckets and here is the column the id column that we provided uh, to apply the hash function this can optimize query performance by avoiding data shuffles and improving join operations the bucketing functionality has the bucketing columns and use a modulus operation based on the number of buckets to design the final bucket for a record 
this determines into which file bucket a particular row will be written. So we can simulate how Spark determines the bucket. Here we have this uh, get bucket function. As you can see, we have to provide the value and the number of buckets, and this is how this is uh, how it has is, it applies the has function on a column. And here we pass uh, the for range from uh, i in range from actually 1 to 11 because the id is here we pass the id we uh, bucketed the bucket column is id right so we have ids from 1 to 10 that means for i in range 1 to 10 then we pass uh, the i here and the number of buckets which is 3 and let's see uh, where how the data was distributed in to which bucket its ID went. So ID uh, 1 belongs to bucket 0, ID 2 belongs to bucket 0, ID 3 belongs to bucket 1, etc, etc. And this is how you can know into which bucket this record went. And it's uh, good to know, just uh, in case you are wondering how the data was distributed. Now, let's uh, actually read from uh, this bucketed table and let's create two data frames again, df1, df2, and let's join those, uh, those data frames. And if we check now, give it a second, if you check now, there is no data shuffling or data ordering. We just scan the data and that's it. So it's pretty simple, we avoid data shuffling and data ordering, which are expensive uh, operations. Now, let's say that this, uh, if we join a partitioned table and a bucketed table, so the first data frame points to the partitioned table and the second points to the bucketed table. So let's uh, join those two again and let's see what we get here in the duck visualization. And here, as you can see, we have a change, we have data sampling for the partitioned table because we have to perform data sampling and sorting, as you can see, for one data frame and the other one, which is the bucketed one, only needs scanning. Yeah, you can see the difference, I believe, right? So the first data frame, uh, we have to perform data sampling and data sorting and on the second data frame which is the bucketed data frame we only perform scanning now you can uh, also use the explain here to, to check uh, the explain plan to see the physical plan here as you can see the uh, first data frame uses uh, exchange has partitioning so data shuffling and the second one only file scanning right now, in general, partitioning is used when you need to filter large volumes of data along certain dimensions, while bucketing is used to optimize joint operations and manage data skews. This is it for today, guys. I hope you understood the concept of partitioning and bucketing a little bit better than before. I wanted to demonstrate something very simple and very practical because this is how I learn and this is how I understand things. I have to, uh, you know, use a very, very simple example to understand the whole concept because when you have large data sets, you need to know already how these things work. If you liked the video and you found it beneficial or it helped you somehow to understand this concept better, Please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.